Oh, it was just brilliant, wasn't it, to be able to sit at a computer and, and work. Didn't you say it? that. Because <laughs> I came from the linear background, and to have in front of you a huge vision mixer and a 9100 edit controller and an A53 um, DVE where you could do all your effects and then the A66, when you were controlling this, you felt like you were the sort of captain of the Starship Enterprise. And it felt very belittling in a way just to go this, which everyone thinks they can do. Yeah. So with that one, you, you walk in and you've got, you've got instant sort of respect because yeah, you're yeah. like, no one like knows what it's pilot. doing. Yeah, exactly. Whereas here you go, that's a computer, I can use that. Yeah. But they can't. No, it was like the difference between, um, yeah, obviously, you know, typing on a typewriter and, yeah. and being on a word processor, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, so we had our screen. So instead of those two big screens, we'd have like these little screens that we do still now. Mm. And, um, and then we've got our bins, so you just press that, wouldn't you? Create yep. a bin, which would be where you'd put your material. Um, let's see if there's any in here already first. Oh, yeah, look, there's some here. So that's it. So uh, what I loved was you can see that I could see it as frames, and you could make the frames bigger or smaller, and you could just suddenly you got frames, you find your can, material yeah, exactly, like that. really quickly. Um, Do you ever use script? You could change the name. No, I didn't. I I, think that's I, um, you mean where you can... It's there, literally... isn't it? I never use it either. Oh, that? Oh, yeah. yes. No, sorry, no. And then you could write little notes mm. in, couldn't you? Like, I don't know, how, doing mm. whatever. Um, no, I never. I, was, I would just like the frames, and I still do. And I wonder if you... See how you... This isn't... Um... Yeah, how do you make it bigger again? Yeah. Is it control A and then plus something or other? That was what was so brilliant, though, um, was that you could actually use the Avid to suit you, couldn't you? Yeah. Um, you so know, it's so fantastic. Yeah, because so. you could. I mean, there were different ways of making the frames bigger. Because I know now I just do Apple L. But, um, I never use them, so. Uh, can't even see how to do it on here. Let's see. Clip. Hmm. Go on. Do the shortcut. There Yay. you go, straight away. <laughs> That's it. So, yeah, so that nice big frames. So you could have, you'd fill that with frames. Mm. And, um, and you, you had to be very careful about how much footage you were putting in, didn't you? So you just. Well, it depends on how much storage you had, but we didn't have much storage then. And there's the drives. Yeah. Storage drives. This looks um, like a big one. This is one of the more new, the newer ones, isn't it? Yeah. Because originally we used to have those big ones that would just have like a couple of gigabytes on, and you'd have these those towers that we were talking about. I think we had when I was working in China. I think we might have had 21 gigabytes between both Avids, and oh. so we'd always be shifting drives around, and then you'd be plugging them in and then suddenly it wouldn't be working and you'd have some kind of SCSI conflict and then you'd be looking at it going, so the SCSI connectors on the back and the SCSI, they had SCSI port numbers. Yes, oh um, yeah, and the numbers had to be, each drive had to have a different number and if you had to number, do the same, yeah. and you could use it. And you've oh. zero to nine to use and, if you, and one of those numbers you couldn't use. Yeah, there were loads of, uh, so suddenly we had a, even though we had this whole new fantastic liberating world, we had a lot of technical <laughs> stuff to get our heads around. And, I'm not the most technical person at the best of times, but I managed to do it. I think it's partly working at Avid, obviously. I, I learned quite a lot, but, you, um, I mean, you and saying, I loved it. It's just... You were saying before about the crashes. I guess if you were demoing the Avids, yeah. when the crashes happen, then it's particularly painful to you. Yeah. Whereas when you're operating, when a crash happens, you're like, OK, I'll go and get a cup of tea. Yeah, yeah. So it was that time when, you know, when you, if it crashed and you were restarting it and the producers would all be like, ah, yeah. and you'd be like, oh, I'll have a rest, because it was all so intense while well, it was booting up. You could have a little rest. But um, so let's have a look then. So, OK, so what we have here then, so this fault, this here that I can move around is actually the project, isn't it? Yeah. So and if you wanted project to have window, a, a yeah. new bin, so say you had, we had tapes then, so we call yeah. them rolls. So we've got roll one. So you might just call that roll one, that roll two. I'll get two. one in there for you. So say this is roll one. You put your tape in your deck, and then you digitise it. So I've now got this little, what we call a bin. Of course, I forget, because, uh, you know, I don't go near the footage these days, and of course it all comes in on cards. Yeah. So for me, this is still sort of second nature. You're going to digitise something, but it's all imported these days. Yeah. You know, you know as a, an editor, it, it, the assistants have done it all before I get there. Yeah, same here. Everything's already in. Yeah. So... so and of course, you'd have to digitise at real time. Yeah, so that would take t time. Yeah. Um, so... Here I would tell it what tape it is, so say that's a new tape and it's tape one. Mm. So, like, mm. No, <laughs> not the best start. Mm. All right, well, never mind. Let's see if I can just do one. Yeah, I don't know. If it's, no, it's not renamed it's, it at it's all. F. There we go. All right, call it F. So <laughs> we've got F, tape. 
there and I'm saying OK. Um, so now I've now got control of there we go. this, which has always amazed me. Um, so, so I press play. I can see what's on the tape on the little screen. And then I'm going to dare to, <laughs> I'm gonna dare to press record. Uh, okay, so now it's actually recording what's on here that we're seeing there, and hopefully it'll go into there. That fingers bin. crossed, yeah. All right, so say that's the shot I want, because I remember doing one job, and oh, I'll try to. There we go. I've stopped it. Hey, that's working. Yeah. Okay. Good. So I'm going to stop it, and I'm going to eject it. There's a little eject button. Yay! Well done for you. But of course, you wouldn't normally normally just digitise everything, wouldn't you? Yeah, it depends on which story space you had, though, because you know right sometimes you yeah. yeah yeah nowadays you digitise the whole tape, wouldn't you? And then you'd go through it afterwards and and actually you say that I've just been working on a, a documentary where they couldn't digitise everything, mm. and invariably the thing we wanted it was the stuff that had to go in that night and come back on the next one. So we're still doing it. Yeah. So this is look, this is that shot that we just yeah. took in, and now I can play it. Do my in and out marks. So I want that bit from there. See that? Wait for it. Oh, might, oh. All right, go from there to. Oh, <laughs> go there to okay, the... start again. Here we go. Let's get this person leaving the frame. This person there, look. That's what I liked about it. I mean, so, when I saw Abid, even though yeah. there were two coming out at the same time, they had light works, which was simpler to use. Yeah. But Abid just made sense. Even from the first time I saw it, you just go, you've got an in, you've got an, an out, out, you hit mark, you hit the red button, and away you go. Yeah, so if I do this. Oh, now, yeah. okay, now it's asking me where I want to put the sequence, so I'm going to say there. there and there we are, so our shot's gone over there. Done, first edit. <laughs> and then I can do another in mark on the keyboard. That's what I was saying, you can, you can use the keyboard. If you didn't want to use the keyboard, you could use this. Mm. Mark in and mark... I can, and you, that's another thing that's great. Look, you can slide through well, the footage. I mean, it won't you the, the same? Because, of course, when you first started, you weren't using the keyboard shortcuts at all. I mean, I'm sure you got there in a day or two. But yeah. initially, you're just using the mouse for everything. Yeah. And very slow. So, yeah, you see, you mark your in with the mouse, mark your out, find out where, it, where you want it to mm -hmm. go here. Oh, let me do a different shot. So. But that's what was so good about it, though, that you could... It's also the speed. I mean, you're there okay, now. You use it. Instantly, you've done all this. If I was doing this on a linear suite, we then, you, you know, you're there, and or you can click down the timeline, and you're there instantly. We'd have to spool back, yeah. find the shot, mark in and out. Then you're going for the pre-roll time, which is five seconds yes. back, and then you've got post-roll of three seconds. Everything just takes twice as long, yeah. at least. Well, I've just, you know, put that second shot down, and there we go. Well done. And then if you didn't, if you wanted to, so this, see that one? That's oh, trim mode. Oh, trim mode. If I go, I'm trying to do trim mode here. Let me see. Um, like there we go. So now I can trim it and literally move a frame or two. And that was just yeah, again, a revolutionary revelation, yeah. as well, wasn't it? Moving, just taking a few frames off there and a few frames off there, and then I play it, see if I it like around. it. Yeah. And that's it. So easy to do it. <laughs> um, Anyone can do it. Yeah, that's great. Um, so this was the timeline, wasn't it? And then so. Oh, yeah, and so this is your sound and this is your picture, so you could have... have um, you say you could have four channels at first. I think it was four, yeah. I seem to remember when I got to it, I think we were allowed eight, because I got a bit later than you yeah. when I was using it all the time in sort of in anger. Yeah. Um, and we were almost, when I first got it, we were almost at broadcast quality, so they were using it, what was the AVR 75, and that would have been in 96... Okay. So AVR 75 and AVR 77 came in that year, and it's again, that was sort of considered broadcast quality. Yeah. And you could finally go work without having to offline and then online. Yeah. And then things about mixing as well, you know, being able to dissolve from one shot to the other were so easy as well, weren't they? Well, yeah, I'm oh, used to still that are. in the linear suites. What's interesting though is yeah. the, with cutting, mixing, trimming, which are the main things that mm. I use, they're, they're the same, aren't they? Now, as they were. At the yeah, this beginning. hasn't changed at all. I mean, the interface Basic is. Basic editing. Yeah. The interface is exactly the same. If you took someone from 92, 93 using it, they'd be able to use the Avid now. Yeah. I mean, I've just, I've just loads of buttons that I ignore now. Look, here's some. <laughs> There's always new stuff coming on that you're going, what's that for? Um, so there oh, we there go. So hit on there, and then we can say we want a 12 frame dissolve. Oh, well. That... Hang on, is number lock on? Oh, that was another thing. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Like, ah. Okay, so I'm going to do a 12 frame. We're going to do 72. 
Why is it doing different numbers to? One, two, Eight, okay. Success. Add and render. Not too bad. I can't remember how long it was take to do. It wasn't, they, they were quite quick, the early renders, weren't they? Relatively, just for a, a straight dissolve, it was, wouldn't take a long time. Yeah, didn't it show it to you, but not actually do it? And then you rendered it, you could render it afterwards. I can't remember. No, uh, no. you had the option, I think. Yeah. I mean, I remember, because again, I, I always worked on things with lots of effects. And some things you'd put on to render, and it'd be an hour. Yeah. And you just go, in fact, yeah, some of the things I worked on, you literally put away to render and we go out and come back. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, that mix there, so if I decided a oh, mix didn't like it at all, um, I think do my That's apple the there, and thing. it's just gone, undo. you could undo it. And if you want to change your mind again, you could have it there. <laughs> I mean, for now, people now, undo is like, well, it's obvious. It's undo like, and but, redo, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you couldn't, a linear suite, you can't undo something. No. You've done it, it's committed. Yeah. And you have to go back and redo it all over again. You know, if you've made a mistake, it's a yeah. nightmare. And I remember um, times when you'd, be, you'd have a viewing and then they'd be talking through the changes of the viewing, you know, and it just would be going on forever about, you know, I don't know, it would be like an hour long film and, mm. and um, just like making the changes as, as you went along as quickly as you could, just listening to them all in the background going through it and trying to make those changes. And what was brilliant is you could, you know, you'd do a copy of your whole sequence, mm. wouldn't you? That was so great. You'd have, you could have like, what I did was every time I did a major change, yeah. and still do, and you yeah, know, you do a copy of your sequence, so you end up with like, you know, I don't know, 10, 15, 20. Usually, um, yeah, for a half hour film, it'd be about 20 full sequences yeah. I'd have, and then for an hour, I'd have like you about trace, 44. Trace You'd know how, all the whether you were yeah, really yeah. nearly there or not by the number of yeah, sequences you had. And the number of times you'll go all the way around and come back to where you started as well. Yeah. Very similar. Well, if you wanted to change those two around, again, if I was to do this in linear suite, I would be laying off and laying back, whereas you can just... Yeah, there's a, well, there's a number of ways you can do it. I'm just saying it's not quite set up how I would... But yeah. anyway, look, I can just pick... That, I've, I've put a mark in and out on there. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to do it an easy way to demonstrate it. So, <laughs> hold on a second. Uh, I might just do it a long way. So, grab a bin. Because we're not set up properly. If we had all the settings in, then we'd be doing it like lightning speed. But, uh, yeah. And also, it is an express. But also, yeah, and it's not. Yeah, but still, let's see. Um, I think I can. Let's just do that and then move it. Ooh. <laughs> right. There we are. I can just move it like that. And then done. So and I, yeah, I would have had to lay that off onto a piece of dump tape. Yeah. Um, and then relay it back in and lay the first shot and then put the second shot in. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, what else would we do? It's really you take so much of it for for granted now. You could, and you could change all the colours of the timeline and all of that, <laughs> can you? Just to make your life a lot easier. But also just the, the fact that you can easily drop the music in afterwards. Mm. You know, again, if we were doing... Um, if we were putting a music track on something in a linear suite, we'd have to lay the music down along the timeline. Yeah. And then you'd keep having to mix... This is really hard for me to remember. You'd have to keep one machine playing back the music the whole time, and if you wanted to put voiceover or if anyone's talking on top of it, you'd have to ride the levels live on, a vi on a, the audio mixer yeah. to, to dip the music in, and then you'd have to try to get it to match up with the faders at exactly the same point. So you'd mark with a China graph pencil, like a white pencil, where the faders were um, when you dropped back in. Otherwise, you'd hear an audio drop every single time you put it in. Here, you just drop the music underneath, and you can change the music any time. If we wanted to change the track, Mm. We'd have to go right back to the beginning and start the edits all over again. Yeah. Now you can just do it. Yeah, you just plonk, them, yeah. plonk the track down yeah. and, and go, oh, don't set like the it. levels manually. Well, you set the levels on here. I mean, it does mean that what you end up... Well, I, you know, I don't think we'd have ever been able to do shows like Big Brother or anything like that without it. It, was, it wouldn't have been possible. No. I think, and the other thing is, um, yeah, exactly. The, all, all editors being able to... Well, more than one editor being able to yeah. access the same material. But also um, the speed of being able to cut it and go, actually, we don't want that. We want to move this yeah. around. You know, the shared storage, absolutely. Yeah. But just to go, oh, we've got that shot. It's over there. We can go and get it. If we had to do that in a linear suite, yeah. you send, you'd have to have teams of assistants, you know, spooling through tapes everywhere just to find that one shot that they nose around at that, that time. Yeah. So. Yeah. 
and th yeah, and things like um, news and current affairs, where there's just some news comes in really yeah. quickly, or you need to change the ending. You know, there's a different ending. You can just literally do it now. And then yeah. I remember working on a film where we were literally playing playing out the film on air and changing the end. <laughs> you know, I'm sure, I'm sure it happens a lot, but uh, it was pretty stressful. Um, yeah, we had to. Do, I remember again when we were working on Big Brother. I think. I think they played live to air from Avid once or twice, and that's again terrifying because you just never know if it's going to crash. Or no. you're going to get oh yeah, that was going, a, that was a thing as well. Yeah. yeah, suddenly being able to just play it out from the machine that you've been cutting it on. Yeah, uh, that's amazing. But yeah, it wasn't. It's not something that. Well, maybe in news it, it's normal, but it's not something that you would want to do. You want to finish your program and <laughs> you want to finish your program, <laughs> Make sure review you're all it, happy with it, and then play it, play it out. out. Yeah, exactly. So you, you worked on something that you said had 500 hours for a two-hour programme. Yeah. How did you manage all of that? Um, well, that was in, I think, 2001. Um, so, well, with, say, I think, you know, obviously I've refined how I do it over the mm. years, but essentially then I was much... <laughs> funnily enough, then I was much... I, I wanted to see every single frame. I mean, there's a point... I had to learn how to do those kind of programs at that speed, mm. um, which involves, you know, in the end of the day, you don't sit and watch obviously all the interview. You you take the interview which someone else has cut down, and then if you think you get a feeling that there's probably something more interesting around there, or I don't know something that might work now around an area, then you sort of maybe read the transcripts or listen to mm. the interview. Um, but essentially, um, having one of these bins for each each tape or mm. um, but you do what I do because I have a separate bin somewhere where I keep all my GVs and then I build timelines of GVs up so that yeah, I mean, people then, shoot them on the hoof and you never know if you're going to find them again. Yeah, so then initially I'd have a, like, um, a card or a roll, a bin for each card or roll. Mm. Um, and then you know, you'd name that after you know, the number of the roll. Mm. And then you would yeah, have your GVs or your, um, your interviews, so-and-so's interview. Yeah. Um, and you'd name the bin that, so it'd be, you know, uh, so first you'd have your, look, we go, well, say this is a two yeah. roll edit. So we've got roll one, roll two, and then we think, okay, I need all those shots with anyone walking down the stairs, I want them in there. So yeah. I'd call that, you know, stairs, for example. Um, there, it's gone to there. And then I'd look through the, the rushes and go, okay, where are those stairs shots? Let's just have a match frame. Uh, I'm just getting this, so I'm just putting the original shot back in here. Sure. Um, and I say, okay, where's the stairs? So there's stairs here, so I can mark in and out, oops, to the stairs bit, and I'm going to drop that stairs shot in here. So now my, no, that's not my stairs bin. Oh. Uh, there's my stairs bin. Yeah. So now I've got my stairs shot in there. So I'd go through all the tapes and find all my stairs shots and put them in there. Um, and, and then also, obviously, I'd want a sequence because I'm going to start my edit, yes. so perhaps sequence one is the, the stairs sequence. Um, the E doesn't seem to be working. There's my E. Yeah. There we are. Um, okay, so this is... Uh, it will be a sequence win. Yeah. Hold on a second. Oh, well, that can be my sequence win, that's okay. So then I create a sequence. There we go, so this is a sequence, and I'm going to call that sequence one. Let's take one of my rushes. It's funny working on one screen. <laughs> uh, hold on a second. Let me just get take these rushes out and put them in there. Well, there were loads of these. I mean, this is the Express Pro, which was the sort of the cut down version of Avid, and there were loads yeah. of these around for a while. Yeah, I, mean, um, no, it's, I mean, it's actually well, it's, it's very practical, isn't it? It's absolutely fine, but I mean, it's still a pain. Because you've got everything on one screen, normally you'd just have the two screens. Things a bit yeah, out of the exactly. way or you, just, around. you just want that desktop space. What I was doing when I was doing the linear editing, mm. it would all have to be so organised. If you were doing it in the online suite, which we sometimes did, it would have to be so organised, and, and the producer would have, or director, would have everything time code logged, and they'd say that's on this reel and that's on this reel. Now yeah. you just digitise everything. You yeah. put it all in there. And you can work with it and you can go find They know where it is still, but we can go and hunt for it. And also we'll find things... Quicker. Yeah. I mean, Usually you can find things yeah. faster on here. Much, yeah. much faster. But, yeah, so it was a lot of, yeah, so the, I was just, yeah the, if there were... I remember um, 
a film about the Nile and yeah, obviously just looking through, going, oh, you know, river shots on tape, you know, tape six at 10 minutes in or whatever yeah. it is, and then you'd go through and then they'd have a whole list and then you'd have to do it like this. But now you can put all your river shots in your river bin and um, so well, the producer's looking for them, you can already go, oh, yeah, they are, don't worry, they're there. And also you'll find other things along the way because mm. we've got all the footage available to us. You'll go, actually, I've seen this shot here. You'll pull it out, keep it separate, put it in a separate bin for your GVs, general views. Yeah. Um, and then you can, you go, oh, I've got this great shot that I found earlier on that the camera had picked up that you didn't even know about. Yeah. And so actually, it's sort of the editors of, well, from where I was as a linear editor, we have much more involvement now. Yes. Originally, I used to um, do, you know, digitising all my own footage. You know, so it that's makes when sense, you through it? it? Yeah, because you'd log it at the same time and you've got, haven't you, you can log it as F3. Put your little red marker on yes. the footage as you're digitising, so you can go, that looks good, and that looks good. Aha, uh -huh, look. Yeah, and then, um, and so what happened was, I think it's when I started doing documentaries for News and Current Affairs. That's not looking good, is it? No. <laughs> oh? Oh, wait, this could be good, though, for us. Um, yeah, when I started doing documentaries for News and Current Affairs, the time went down so then suddenly you know they wanted to the well, load the footage in before you also started yeah exactly editor rates and assistant rates assistant yeah well then cheaper. you get in and it was like you expected your footage to be yeah. there so you can you can start you know and even sometimes it'd be labeled up sometimes it wouldn't it depend on what you'd organized so there was a room where um so there'd be a machine room where someone would or oh. assistants, or overnight, often. Yeah, or in your suite, someone yeah. would come and, and load all the, but the are, footage in. The, and the poor assistants are generally doing overnight shifts, doing all our digitising for yeah. us. Yeah. Um, we try and be nice to them. Yeah, they were, thank God for them. Yeah. And the engineers as well, because I know, we, I used, was used to, especially working at Avid, putting machines together and going behind, trying to sort things out, and then there was a time where it's like, you know, don't, do that, leave I mean, it to us, and then there'll be engineers to do it. And well, I mean, Avid's it now, and again, they're so much, so much easier to use, because we'd have the same problem that even we had over there with the, um, the uh, analog, the vision mixer, where you'd get reference problems with the Avid. You remember yes. back in the early days, and you'd have to have, everything would have to be black and burst reference if you were to digitise, otherwise none of the footage would go in, and so you'd be fiddling around the back going, why isn't this working? And you're like, I know I've put, there's a cable which is, not connected somewhere. Yeah. So yeah, I don't miss any of that. Now no. you know I've got an habit at home on my laptop. Yeah, me too. So this, I found there's a bit of interview on this tape, so I, th I thought that might be quite fun to have a bit of an interview to edit with. And so uh, yeah, we've just managed to digitise that. Can't hear him yet, no, but we should be able to turn, turn his audio up. Um, but you know, so. I think with interview, because obviously interviews can be quite long, often um, the producer or director has gone through and, and worked out the clips mm. that they want, so you could take them in like this, but I can't hear him. The level looks okay. Oh no, it's quite low, isn't it? It is quite low. Um, oh, I can't. I'll try this. See if it's that one. Try now. There we go. It was a very unhappy period for everybody. There he is. And I don't really want to know. It was a very unhappy period for everybody. Well, that's a good start. <laughs> that's a great, that'll be the first shot then. Uh, so, <laughs> oh, so, all right, where's our sequence? So we're going to start again now. I don't know if there's going to be anything else on here. Should I have a quick whiz through yeah, just for a couple more got. shots? Well, I mean, not so much on, you know, we'd spool through it, but generally it's easier to spool through it on the Avid. Because tape, it starts and stops and you're dropping things out. But yeah, we can go through... I always watch streams at twice speed, don't you? Yeah. And it, I'll do it in a second. So. Yeah. Like now, you see, every time I go... F oh, yeah, I he breaks really up, we can't hear what he's doing. But yeah. on the Avid, we can view this at twice normal speed. We'll do it in a second. Um, I'm going to take a little bit more. And you get really good at, at interpreting what they're saying. Yeah. Even though they sound a bit like Mickey Mouse. Oh, because he stopped having a thing. He's good, isn't he? I like him. Yeah. Good interviewee. Generous or, or whatever, was always treated with suspicion. Okay. God, he's got some great lines. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to stop here, stop recording, Bye. turn that off. Um, so we've got our two shots in this bin here, and we'll call that interview. I'll just call it IV for interview. Mm -hmm. um, and then let's see if we can. 
colours and things. A little sequence. So yeah. his first profound comment. Let's see if the camera has given us any cutaways. I didn't see any. No. And uh, the it was a very unhappy. So we want to come on. It, it was very unhappy. Oh yeah. It was a very unhappy period for everybody. So that was very quick just to find the mark in, wasn't it? Oh, you do. You I can see you. You do the exact exactly same way I do. Left hand on the keyboard. Right, right hand, hand on, on the mouse. mouse. Yeah, and also so I can scroll through it like yeah. this and I can't hear anything. But then I think if I put the caption lock That's down, right. I can hear him. Yeah. Um, anyway, so... It was a very unhappy period for everybody. And I don't really want to go back to it. I always <laughs> think, have you seen it on the keyboard? Obviously it's all multicoloured. And I always think, I know this keyboard so well, I can work without it, without mm. the colours. And then as soon as you take it away from me, I'm lost. Yeah, I'm like, I know it's around here somewhere, but you think every single day, in hours a day I'm on this keyboard, mm. and you go all, you know, all the legends and the in and out and clear in and out and, and uh, trim, etc., etc. Yeah, and I know play. roughly where they are, Yeah. but still, you take that keyboard away from me and I'm sort of floundering a little bit. Yes, I agree. So we can do like, play forward, play backwards, single speed. Mm -hmm. Oops, single speed and uh, double speed. speed. <laughs> and I can, yeah. You can hear him. Yeah. You can understand him. And then, and you also get used to, oh, I suppose that was the same anyway, then you never look at people when you're working. Do you find that? You just talk to people even at home, yeah. just look, look staring in front of you. <laughs> right, so um, there's, oops, so we've got him in his unhappy period. It was a very unhappy period for everybody. And I don't really want to go back through it. I think it's also changed the dynamic as well, editing like this, because mm. I don't know about you, when you were, because you did the offline beforehand. Yes. Um, but you'd have prepared director producer that would come in and say, we know this is here. Yeah. But it, it feels much more of a collaboration, I think, yeah. now. Yeah. Because you can just digitise the footage and you can work together. Yes. So, I don't know, you know, sometimes it gets quite fractious if you're working next to someone long hours and you're going, oh, we're both tired and we're under pressure. Yeah. Um, but and you've got to sort of create something and, and people aren't happy with what you're doing at that point. Yeah, I think you, you are in the edit suite much much sooner, aren't you, yeah. generally? Yeah. Because um, the footage is digitised, you may as well just get in there and yeah. get on with it, but no yeah. one's had a chance to look through it, possibly. Um, so you see here, the, those are the two clips that we just digitised mm. of his interviews, and that's the first one, I've just mm. moved them around. So I can see that's the first one that says one or two, I haven't yeah. even named them yet. Um, but so now we've put two in there and let's listen to him. Everything that I ever wanted to do is all the way out of the Everything that I ever wanted to do, no matter how... He's burnt out, isn't he? ...generous or, or whatever, was always treated with suspicion. Oh, it's out of sync. It is. Let's see if it, it might... Or whatever. No, it's fine again. Yeah. OK, so I'm editing that over. Now, he's got that really long pause Ooh. in the middle, so we can cut that out. And I'm turning him up a bit as well. Uh, God, it's really funny, things that I normally do, second nature. Yeah. Ah, oh, you're gonna, like, no, oh, do you know what? Shall we, why don't you put your keyboard short, shortcuts in? Because well, let me just cut his... OK. I'm just going to cut his... Um, that pause out. If I ever wanted to do it, no matter how... How? Generous or... So I'm going to make his pause a bit shorter because mm. it's taking a while. So that's his pause, or some of it, and I'm just snipping it out with a little scissor icon. Or yeah, if I went to the hamburger, I think there'd be some there's scissors on in that's there. That's the hamburger up there, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I was just thinking, uh, you, can, you can set this so that you've got everything here um, up there. But anyway, there's a little scissor X there, so I'm just going to cut out his pause. No matter how generous or so you've still got a bit of a pause but not and a jump cut that one. either you're going to cover or live with yes probably cover <laughs> so uh, yeah you're in terms of shortcuts yeah great shortcut i mean everyone likes to work slightly differently but, i mean the great thing with avid is it's so flexible and you can all work yeah. in lots of different ways and you can do the same thing about five different ways if you wanted to move this clip around you can either just slide it using the i don't know what you call it the insert replace um, or you can drag it into a subclip and then edit it back in and then cut out the old one. Or you can copy and paste it into another window. There's lots of different ways you can work. And as everyone wants to work differently, they always use different keyboards. 
and different keys, and so you can map them to various places on the keyboard. You can change every single key if you want yeah, to. Yeah, and so on all the things that are on here that you're already given there, mm. you know, they are useful, but um, I tend to, to use them on here, yeah. so I might get rid of those because it's a bit of a clutter since I don't use, use them. I think we, we I, I know various editors who get rid of all the keys mm. so that uh, the directors can't touch their keyboard, so they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> so, uh, um, so, yeah, so up here we've got uh, the command palette there in the tools menu. And um, and then along here, we can see all the various keys that we might, might want to add down there. Um, and, and also, you can actually change these, can't you? Yeah, change so everything. Can, yeah, so you can In just fact, completely customise it. When I was an online editor, I used to editing um, Channel 4 Car Show Driven. And I came in one day, and someone had mapped, instead of the play key, L had become lift. And there was an into out on the whole sequence, so I came in to do the online and there was no sequence there because someone had already hit play, oh, thinking no. it was playing the whole sequence, and we had to go and recover it from the attic. But it was a little bit of a start of the day going, where is my online <laughs> sequence? So the Hamburg is just there, and it's just a drop-down menu that allows you to get access to all the other options you've got there. Which yeah, are, you know. so if I thought, oh, actually, I'd rather have this, or oh, actually, I think I... You have to do it via the... Yeah, so yeah. I come up here and... Let me see, hold on a second. Um, right, the command palette. So I tell it down here. It says button to button um, reassignment. So yeah. So say I want this button here instead of the one that's there. That one there. I can just move them like that. Um, that allows me to jump through the sequence. Look. But it's just that massive flexibility allowing you to work the way you want to, yes. rather than being sort of rigidly defined, you have to work in one way. Yeah, because I can jump through the sequence like that yeah. here, on the keyboard. Um, and then this hamburger is just another way of doing the same. That's just a bit slower, look, isn't it? Yeah. But it gives you access to the ones that you don't use so, so much. Yeah, it's just another mm. menu. Um, what was the other thing? The attic. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, the great thing is, with Avid, it, it's tends to, if it's working well, I've had cases where the attic's emptied, but if it's working well, it will back up all your edits. Yeah, so you can set it for uh, however, long you, however often you want it to back up your, your sequence. So it'll, it'll do an auto-save about every 15 minutes, which is what most people have, which is, just saves your project anyway. But then it will also do backups of various bins. And I've had it before where I've had to go, quite regularly, I'll go back to the attic for something that I've overwritten that I thought I didn't need anymore, and someone goes, actually, we do want that, and you'll go back and you can go back a day um, to recover things from the attic. Yeah, and the attic was brilliant. I often mm. find myself clambering around in there, yeah. trying to find something after it's crashed. Do they do that on other edit? Uh, the edit systems? Yeah, I don't think they've got it on Final Cut. Right, I'm... Back to you, Ed, what are you doing now? Um, so I'm... So he's got his <laughs> cuts, so if I play him now... I don't really want to go back through it. Everything, OK, okay so two things. If I want to give him a bit of a pause. Um, hopefully this. Which window is showing what? Well, this window is showing our little <coughs> sequence of someone coming down the stairs and the people on the balcony watching that we cut earlier. Generally, generally referred to as a source. Record setup, isn't it? Yeah, so, so that's like the two monitors we used to have mm. before. And one we would would have all the material that we have for the film, um, and then the other one would have our our edited sequence. So this is our sequence that we're mm. editing, um, and this is, a, I suppose, a sub sequence because it's our mm. two shots that we cut earlier. Mm. Um, and and I just we can see on the timeline here where his cuts are in his interview. Um, so we don't want to have him jumping when we get to the cuts like this. Everything all over the place. The sun's in and the sun's out. Yes. So we're going to put a shot, and it could be you know him reminiscing of when he was at at uh, college or something. So um, are you going to keep the atmos in as well for the? Uh, yeah. So we can have the atmos. So I need to because I've only got I've got these are his two audio tracks, the green ones. So let's make some more audio tracks. Atmos being short for atmosphere from yes. the original source footage. So in this clip menu, um, it says new audio tracks. I'm going to do add two new audio tracks. Um, and I'm going to take tracks one and two, which are probably the main 
Oh, look, it says five and six instead of three and four. Mm. Um, we're going to take um, the two audio tracks over as well for that for this shot. So I've marked an in from just before when, just before his uh, shot change, and an out a little bit into his interview. Um, and then I'm going to lay down this shot. And see what happens. Mm. Oh, well, it's not going to let me. Oh, it's saying this insufficient source material. Okay, so I won't put an out point on there, and I'll just go like that. So. There's a oh. very loud shot. So, um, so this is the audio from the new shot and the the picture from the new shot. So let's see what's that. We want to go back through. It. So obviously, Beautiful. yeah. <laughs> so obviously the sounds very loud. So I'm going to turn these tracks down. And again, there's two different ways of doing that straight away. So you can use the audio mix tool that you are doing. Yeah. Or you can use the rubber banding. Yeah. So if I use this audio mix tool, it's actually only showing me tracks one, two, three, and four. And for some reason, these are called five and six, on which I'm not going to try and work that out now. I'm just going to change the. Go to that one. Oh, here we go. So yeah, let's turn five and six down, low, because that's the sound from the other shots. Really want to go back through everything. Success. Yeah, and it's still very loud, so I'm going to turn it down. And obviously, I could turn him up as well if mm. I. Obviously, you have to check your levels and all of that, but. For now, let's just. Oh, I didn't need to do that. Let's just turn him up. And I don't really want to go back through it. Everything. Lovely. It's yeah. much better. So I'm going to put him back, put him up here as well, and turn him up there as well. So this is telling me tracks. So that's tracks one, two, three, four, five, six. Anyway, so we've got our little cutaway. Wants to go back through it. Everything that I ever wanted. And so obviously that's quite short. So let's see if we can extend that shot. Ah. Into trim mode. So that's, that's allowing me to lengthen this shot. So it's. Show us what you pressed to do that. Um, so I pressed this shot here, which is, says trim mode. So now it's taken me to the edge of this shot, um, which is this little shot here, the, the new shot that I've put, laid over his interview. And it's now allowing me to lengthen that. So I can lengthen that. So I'm literally holding the picture and the sound and I can <laughs> drag them along all the way over him if I want to or I mean an ideal way to do it is just listen to him and then I can see where I want to cut it. Everything that I ever wanted to do. So if I wanted to come out after do. Everything that I ever wanted to do. And there we are. How... And, then, and then we could find another shot. <coughs> Let's just find a little shot of here of people looking over the uh, Right, so I'm going to put that shot as a second shot over him in his middle, the middle part of his interview. It's not doing. There we are, let's just do it like this. There we go, so that's the second shot down. And I might lengthen that shot so that it covers. So I'm having to add a little bit. Right, let's go there. Right, so I'm going to. Lengthen this shot. I should be able to just press play and it lengthen it, but I think that's something to do with the settings. So I'm just going to drag this along to the to that cut and extend it a little bit further. So now we can see that the new two pictures are going over his middle audio into his next little bit of audio. Very slight L cut. Yeah. And then we can see that this sound's going to stop here. Mm. This the Atmos sound from there. Go back through it. Everything that I ever wanted to do. No matter how generous or... So, say we like that, but we want this sound to continue to the end of where it cuts back to his interview. So, I'm going to highlight those two tracks. I'm going to take this back. Um, go into trim mode. And I'm just going to drag that sound down to... So even though that's not the actual sound under the second shot, yes. it's close enough and it's as atmos, it's fine, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so. and it's the sound from the first yeah. shot and assuming that, that it's all going on at the same time. Yeah. Um, so and then I can use this little trim mode button here. And I'm taking it, the shot, this shot, well, I'm not taking the shot, the sound uh, forwards and backwards until I get it at the shot change there. Um, so now that sound goes under both of those shots. So let's play this. <laughs> it was a very unhappy period for everybody. 
and I don't really want to go back through it. Everything that I ever wanted to do, no matter how generous or or whatever, was always to sink system. again. Yeah. I don't know why well, it's I think, out of sync. I that's think that's not the out of sync. We're not out of sync. Should we, should we just put it out of sync very quickly because it will show you if it's out of sync. Yeah. So we can actually do a trim inside the clip and move it out of sync. But it's yeah. yeah. Like if I take, just move him along. Yeah, that's it. Like so that. Then now he's now he's definitely definitely out of sync. <laughs> so if I play it, and you can see there's like a black, literally mm. a black hole there. I press play. Generous or or whatever was always. Yeah. So it's telling you there that you're not you're 13 frames out of sync, and then I think, oh my god, I'm out of sync. So I should be able to go. Uh, I don't know on this one, but yeah, yeah, there we go. Apple Z or whatever, Control Z, and he's gone back into sync again. Um, and then you have things like you know you can fade to black. Is that mix that you were doing on the yeah. other system? You can just literally hear without having to bother with GPIs. You can just do it very quickly. And yeah. It's so I can go up here. Uh, let's go to our hamburger. So what would happen That's when to dissolve back in the a sort of early 90s when you'd do this, you'd mm. do all of this, and then it would come to me in the online suites, and all of this would come over to an EDL, mm -hmm. and it would recreate all of it. So it would say, here's a dissolve, yeah. and it would do it automatically. Yeah. I wouldn't actually have to do anything. You just basically push two buttons, and the whole sequence would conform. All we would have to do would be to change the tapes in the machine. Yeah, it literally through. says it wants take one, doesn't yeah. it? And it'll put tape one shots yeah. down wherever they are on the film, and take two, and you to go through. So yeah, we'd, you would make your sequence, hour long mm. sequence, then it would come to us on one of these. Yes. A little floppy disk, which has got one megabyte, 1.1 1 .1 megabytes of storage or 1.2. Yeah. And that would come and we put it in to the machine over there. Yes. And we'd get it to auto conform. Yeah, so it would tell you these three, ed these edits that we've done on here, yeah. the picture ones, it would say, you know, it's, it's from here to here on the tape, from yeah. here to here on that tape, from here to here on that tape. And um, take those bits. And it's magic the way you could do it. You could, you could do we would do either an A mode conform or a C mode conform. Yes. So an A mode conform would be completely linearly. Yeah. And we would keep changing the tapes and put them in and out. Or they'd do a C mode. Yeah. Whereas it would come from the source tape only. Yeah. And it would run up and down the timeline of taking all the shots from, from that, just that tape. one tape. Yeah. And drop them in exactly the right place. Yeah. Um, and, and also, I mean, it was very, very clever. The, uh, the program behind it is amazing that you'd then go, OK, while one tape was being laid on the timeline, it would then start spooling either the second tape or it would eject the second tape and ask for the third tape to go in. Uh -huh. So it's really clever the way it worked. Give you some more time, because you talked about it in the separate, then you pick up the disc you didn't. So just one more time, when you get to the end of your edit, oh, yeah. what we do on this is... You we can do one now. This. Yeah. Can I just do my dissolve? Yeah, go on. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do right. it. Right. Let, let me know what it's... What it's sure. Yeah, yeah. All right. Then, so, so at the end of his sequence then, so say we're finishing our sequence, mm. um, I'm telling it to do a 15 frame okay. dissolve. Uh, I'm just going to show you how I did it. So yeah. I went to the hamburger. Normally I would actually have this mm. um, up, sitting up here, but I'm going to click on that. It says dissolve. So we're going to do a 12 frame um, start actually ending. Now I'm going to do it in the middle. Um, okay. It's going to start six frames earlier, I suppose. But anyway, it's going to fade to black. So I'm going to press add and render. That would be the sound. Oh, so and it's rendering there. That was a quick render, though, wasn't it? Yeah. So that's rendering the effect. So it's creating the effect for us. Yeah. So if I press play. Right. Well, so I can't even hear him. So I'm yeah. going to change that to start when he finishes and hope he does one of his great pauses. So if I go uh, start, add. Nice quick renders. Treated with suspicion. So okay. I, I'm going to go with that. So right, should we create an EDL now? Yes. We should try and no, we're not going to edit decision to list. Say. Oh no. So now this we should save because this is all offline quality. It's not broadcast quality. Yes, yeah, it's it's low resolution because yeah. we were because we didn't have much storage space for yeah. all our rushes. So we've gone in at a low resolution. So now we go to tools but now, EDL. Now this would often crash the machines. Um, various EDL managers they got better and better, but even now. I had to make an EDL the other day, and I'm still very nervous about it because they can crash the machines. So we go. So, so what? Do so this. the idea is that the, the this sequence Get is going to be sequence. recreated in broadcast quality yeah, on another go. system. There's our list of EDL. So we've got all the time codes in and out then. Yeah. Um, and we would save that to a floppy disk, yeah. and then take it over to the linear online suite back in the day. Yeah. And then that would recreate all of it. Yeah. Because I'd say. So, Yes, yeah, so we want video one. Yeah, sorry, video 
tracks one, two, three, and four, because you could have had more layers of video, yeah. couldn't we? But we only had one. Oh, that gets really. I mean, if we have it, then we need two EDLs if we're doing to a, a linear suite. So you'd have to yeah. build them separately. Yeah, that gets very complicated. All right. <laughs> making me think there. Okay, and then um, yeah, we can update it if we need to. Go to the, I mean, I remember the, because there's, there were so many different types of edit controllers around. I think if it's got the EDL settings, see if there's that one on the template, because there were. No, that's only got the one. But there were, I mean, there's about 20 different types of edit controller. And you have yeah. to have them all set up exactly. But it's got everything there. You can see it. Yeah. Audio dissolve, audio These dissolve, are the shots, video aren't delay, they? split, video delay. First um, shot, second shot, third shot, whatever. Yeah. And these would be huge lists. And half of the edit controller, the bigger one, which was the 9100 that we used to use, was about edit list management. Because you'd have to make changes along the way, and then you'd be involved in rippling lists or deleting uh, various events from lists and all of those things along the way. Um, thankfully, I don't have to deal with that anymore. <laughs> well, should we? We could do a render. Should we build some? Build an effect? Yeah, you can build an effect if you like. From your effects, here. Yeah. All right. Well, should we switch around? Yeah. Right, we'll, go. <laughs> we'll go this way. Right. Let's see what we can do with this. Um, and I'm going to be just as rusty because it's not my settings. So if we were to create. A new video layer. <laughs> now this will be really unpleasant to look at. Um, we'll match for, no, what have we got? Actually, yeah. Why don't we? Why don't we? If I can, uh, effect palette. Uh, there's your funny. There's your picture in picture. I saw just then. That you oh, did we could do that. <laughs> I mean, this is again. We haven't got. Still at this point, we can't do the. Um, oh, we can do these things. They'll take ages to render. Something really like, there we go, kaleidoscope effect. Now, there's no way you'd ever use this in a documentary. Um, but if we wanted to do that, we can go into out. Oh, my settings aren't there. And we'll render that into out, so that effect. And let's see how long that will take. So by rendering it, you're... Creating the effect. Oh, it's not too bad, actually. I mean, when we used to have these, so it's creating the video effect now. Um, but an effect like this back in 97, I'm, I'm sure that would take an hour to render. Um, and I think, is it T? There we go, that tells us how long, oh, a yeah. minute. <laughs> and that's the thing, when I was first doing these effects, and it was just a simple effect, oh, we had a, I was doing a video, <laughs> and I had to do a few sort of multi-layers blending in, and that was taking 20 minutes to render, and I didn't realise that the control plus dot to cancel, it just looks like type control plus, I'm like, I'm hitting control, why don't it stop? Yeah. So no idea what I was doing. Yeah, so I remember we, that as well, having to stop things for some reason. But I quite liked rendering, because rendering you could just have a cup of tea, you'd stop and have a chat, it would be one of those moments where you get to have a break. And mm. now, of course, everything happens instantly, so you don't have to render anything. Mm. So you're like, right, next, next, and it's always under pressure. As a render, you'd be like, okay, mm -hmm. and now we just sit back. How's your day? Yeah, it's true. And know those things that give you those natural pauses, just they've all nearly gone, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah, happy, you know, sometimes when the avid crashes, you're like, okay, we'll have a, you know, I'll make a phone call now. And there we I, go. I know I get to the point where I just, you know, if my phone, I, I answer my phone or I'll just go on Facebook for 10 minutes or something yeah. just to have a break just every a hour break. or so. There we go. So that's our it was a very beautiful day effect day that we would never, day ever, day ever day use. Day but, you know, Everything. there's lots of effects, but then of course we'll undo that because that's awful. And undo because, it, there we go. And back to normal. It was a very unhappy period for everybody. What if you were going to put a title on there, say? Oh, the title's nice and easy. Okay. Uh, it's called Bill, I think. And actually, um, I was talking to uh, a friend, an editor, Simon, mm -hmm. and he was saying how Simon Thorne. He was saying how excited he was that he could suddenly have loads of fonts to play with, you know, so easily. Um, I get on. on the Avid. I think you, because you got there before me. I mean, yeah, we've got you know anything you want now. Mm. Um, but I think at the beginning you could only have a couple. Is yeah. that right? Yeah. But of course, it was only offline. Oh, that's anyway. right, because he was saying that he brought in um, uh, one of the, you know, the Mac, uh, the um, Mac software. In. Mm. Um, I'm trying to remember what it was. Was it just photo? Would it have been Photoshop? No. Um, but yeah, but just that whole thing about being able to bring <coughs> bringing other other Mac software. <laughs> there we go. We killed it. And using it. Um, Add-ons. Unable to save this title. 
Yeah, I mean, you do, you know, we, you'd use all sorts of things. There was various software just for captions, wasn't there? But mm. of course, in the offline, you wouldn't, I mean, you'd put it there as a guide, because mm. we'd also get, one of the things you would do is you'd do a play out from the offline that we would take into the online so we could use as a reference if there was anything specific yeah, that you wanted and to recreate. Yes. Yeah, and you could have your time code on that if you wanted to, your yeah. time code as extra I'm not sure backup, I can actually you? save this. Um, it's, it's not very different, is it? I mean, we're missing the second screen. It's quite nice to have rendering again, but it, it's, it's very, very familiar. Yes, it is. I mean, I know that if I spent, uh, you know, 20 minutes, I could get the settings how I want them. Yeah, and by the end of the day, it would be second being, actually. Yeah, yeah, you would just be an extension of Although your, yourself. it is a bit crashy, isn't it? But then, uh, you know, the Express Pro always was a little bit. Talking of um, crashes, mm -hmm. um, I used to find that, you know, I don't know, going to, it was quite comforting to know that it was saving and you could go into the attic and recover stuff that you'd lost and... Um, oh, that's incredible. Possibly. Not always, actually. No, every once in a while, yeah, no, this is not going to work. We can't create a caption. The other thing is you can do Apple S or whatever. You can save it yeah, ongoing. Yeah. You well, can isn't, think isn't something that, you think so brilliant, you can save isn't it. Isn't that second nature as well? It's like you're going to take a stop. You have a chat with someone. You just quickly hit yeah, Apple S or Control yes, S yeah. to make sure that you know it's saved. But yes. there are times every once in a while when the Avid has a bug and it stops saying, saving everything. Yeah. And then you can lose. I've lost a day's work before. People have lost a day's work before. Yeah. 